Hello everyone, so today we're going to be learning about a little review of all of our sequences. Um, this unit is almost over. We're actually going to just have a review day on Monday and a test on Tuesday. So how it's going to work is today we are just going to apply our knowledge of sequences to answer a series of questions. Um, that's our learning target. So today you're going to be looking at two different sequences and it's going to be up to us together um, to write the explicit formula to find the nth term and to create a recursive model. So I'm going to give you a quick heads up. So the Regents typically doesn't make you write the explicit model in the part two, three, or four. It's typically a part one question. Um, um, the recursive sequences typically pop up in the part two or three. Um, I think last year or two years ago, what they did was they actually had students find the first five terms similar to what we did uh, yesterday or the day before. Um, so let's just jump right into it. You're always going to be given a sequence. Always, always. Sometimes it'll be a visual. Sometimes it'll be some squares. But you're always going to be given a sequence. So our first sequence is 2, 8, 32, 128. One thing I want to ask you, and one thing that I want you to think about as we're going through this question or so forth, are your numbers getting larger? Are they getting smaller? If they're getting larger, are they getting large pretty quickly, or are they getting small very quickly? Am I going up by the same amount each time by addition or subtraction? If I wanted to look at this addition route, when I go from 2 to 8... I increase by 6. When I go from 8 to 32, I increase by 24. That already tells me that this is not an arithmetic sequence. So now I have to figure out what it is. I have an idea. If it's not arithmetic, it's got to be geometric. So I say to myself, what multiplies from 2 to 8? I multiply by a 4. Multiply by a 4 to get to 32, and then I multiply by another 4. This could all be done on your calculator, your phone calculator, Desmos, whatever. It'll give you the exact same answer every single time. Part A of this question actually requires us to know that this is a geometric sequence because it's saying to write the explicit formula. To write the explicit formula for a geometric sequence, which the sequence is, we need to know what the explicit formula is. A sub n, a sub n equals a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So if I look at this question, my first term, or a sub 1, was a 2. So when I write my equation, I'm going to write a sub n equals 2. And then I have to think about what I multiplied by. That's my ratio. I multiplied every single time by a 4. And then I raise it to the n minus 1. That is your final answer for part A. We're now going to use our formula to find the eighth term. The eighth term. We're going to use our formula to find the eighth term. So all we do for this part is we simply rewrite our formula, which we said before was a sub n equals 2 times 4 to the n minus 1. What I want to do, though, is I want to find a sub 8, which is going to be 2 times 4 to the 8 minus 1. This is all calculator work. Like I said it before, you heard me take out my TI-84+. We type into our calculator 2, parenthesis 4, parenthesis, caret, 8 minus 1. I hit enter. My answer was 32,768. That is my eighth term. 
the recursive sequence that we're actually going to be writing for this question, um, 2, 8, 32, 128, is actually not that challenging. Um, giving you a heads up, the recursive sequence where you actually have to come up with your own is rarely tested, um, but it's a nice skill just to have when you get to Algebra 2 in a few years. Um, so, for this recursive, we always want to write down what our first term is. And our first term was a 2. We then write down our rule a sub n equals, and we always have an a sub n minus 1. Giving you a heads up, whenever you have a recursive sequence for a geometric sequence, the only thing you need to write is your common ratio. That is your recursive sequence rule. Now we're going to look at a different sequence. Our sequence is 7, 12, 7, 22. We want to write an explicit formula that can be used to find the nth term. So I want you to pause. I want you to t ask yourself, is this sequence arithmetic or is it geometric? Remember, we just had a geometric example, so there's a pretty good chance it's arithmetic. So let's look at it. When I go from 7 to 12, let me zoom in. When I go from 7 to 12, what do I go up by? I do 12 minus 7. That's just a plus 5. When I go from 12 to 17, I ask myself, what did I just do? I went up by 5, which is the exact same thing as 17 minus 12. And then I go up by plus 5 again. So we know that this is an arithmetic sequence because I am increasing at a constant rate. My constant rate is a 5. Part A for this question says we want to write an explicit formula that can be used to define the nth term. We know that for an arithmetic sequence, our sequence formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus d times n minus 1. And that is given to you on your reference sheet. Remember, your reference sheet is your best friend in this course. So when I have a sub n, I keep that a sub n the same, and I want to figure out what a sub 1 is. I go back to my sequence. What's my first term? It's a 7. I now add my common difference, which was a 5. And I keep my n minus 1 the same, whatever that is. Here's the issue. Mr. O'Sullivan, Ms. Townsend, every other math teacher in the world, every other person in the world hates when it's written like this. What we want to see, we want to see you distribute that 5, and we want to see you combine your like terms. So I get a 7, 5 times n is 5n, and 5 times a negative 1 is negative 5, so I leave it as a minus 5. I now combine my like terms, and I get a sub n equals 5n, plus 2, because 7 minus 5 is 2. That is your explicit formula that will be used to find the nth term. So what part B is asking is we want to use our formula to find the eighth term. So the first thing Mr. Slavin and Ms. Townsend like is we like to rewrite our explicit formula. So our explicit formula, which we found before, was a sub n. Ooh, one second. A sub n equals 5n plus 2. Here's the issue. I want to find the eighth term. So I'm simply doing a sub 8 equals 5 times 8 plus 2. Because everywhere I see an n, I input that index or that nth term. So after inputting that 5, I then simplify it. So I do 5 times 8, which is 40. You can just type this into your calculator. Or if you want to practice your mental math skills, you can do it how I'm doing it. 5 times 8 is 40. 40 plus 2 is 42. So a sub 8 is equal to 42. That is your final answer. 
Now our final part of this question, it says part D, you know Mr. R. Sullivan makes a lot of typos, it should be part C. So if you want, if you printed this, just cross it out and put a C. It says write a recursive sequence that can be used for the example above. Our start, or a sub 1, is 7. So what I would recommend is, if you are sort of saying, like, I completely forget what the heck recursive sequences are, you should go back and watch the lesson from yesterday. There, we go through two or three problems specifically of how to write the recursive sequence. So I get a sub 1 is equal to 7, and I always write down a sub n is equal to a sub n minus 1. And since this is an arithmetic sequence, here's the only thing you need to write. You just need to write down your common difference. If I go back to my sequence up top, I can see that my common difference was 5. So all I'm doing is simply increasing my previous term by 5. So all I write is plus 5. That is your final answer. So if you need to, please rewatch this lesson. I would say the most challenging piece is definitely the part C, where you actually have to come up with your own recursive rule. So here's what you're going to do next. If you're like, I need to watch this video one more time, watch it one more time. If you need to watch it two more times, watch it two more times. If you need to watch it three or more times, you should really reach out to myself or Miss Townsend or come to office hours next week. Also, make sure for your attendance that you are, and I repeat, are going to be writing a question that you have about the video. Make sure that you write down the question. That counts as your attendance, and that is submitted on Google Classroom. Make sure that you complete the independent practice. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Have a great day, ladies.